You're listening to Wealth at Work, a show designed to help advisors think, make decisions, and cast a vision to create a business for the future. Hosted by financial planner, author, speaker, and CEO of Advisor2x, Ross Marino. Welcome to the Wealth at Work show. Today, we are joined by Jeff Atchison. Hello, Jeff. Good afternoon. Good to be with you, Ross. Always good to see you again. I know you're going to be speaking at Wealth at Work once again. Love having you at the conferences. And uh, this year, you have a pretty unique topic that you're going to talk about and combine a few different things. But before we do that, how about we start off with a quick intro for people who may not know who you are? Sure. Uh, My name is uh, Jeff Atchison, and I've been in the business for about 45 years in a multidisciplinary uh, manner, in meaning that includes qualified retirement plans, non-qualified benefits, financial planning, wealth management. And I always like to say I'm really in the people business, not the plan business. So whatever the problems that someone is having, we try to help solve them from there. Before we dive into the actual presentation, I know 2023 has been quite a tough year for you, and uh, I know you're okay sharing about it. Would you mind tell us what's been going on in 2023? Sure. Uh, It has been a tough year, Ross. I appreciate you um, asking. And, you know, I'm 66 and a half years old, and I've learned more in the last six months than I probably did in the first 66 years, if you will. But um, unfortunately, my daughter uh, passed away at 37 years old from some complications from an accident and some health problems. But those health problems were rooted really in mental health and uh, and alcohol addiction uh, from there. So I've been very forthright in talking about it. And what's been really uh, amazing is the outreach I've gotten with my social media posts and different things. That we probably had 60,000 views of the things we've posted up about our journey uh, over the last several months. She died in, in May. And I've probably had 50 some people, uh, Ross, reach out to me and Thank me for not uh, being uh, ashamed of, of the issues that we were rooted in, number one, and number two, being willing to, to speak out and, and talk about mental health, which is different than mental illness, where you, you know, have a, a diagnosis and a prescription and those kind of things. And mental health can be rooted in um, just uh, poor self-esteem, lack of self-confidence, lack of self-worth. And in my daughter's case, unfortunately, uh, treatment was uh, self-medicating and uh, alcohol was the the drug of choice. And that just led to a series of health problems that eventually took her away from us all too soon. So we've decided um, as a family that we're doing something about it. We've set up the Amber Strong Memorial Fund and are partnering with an organization called Ruling Our Experiences or ROCKS that works with young girls primarily in the middle school, high school, and trying to get to them early. Because if you look at the statistics these days of cyberbullying, social media, body image, relationships, it's just tough. And and we're trying to have a positive impact um, and get to them before they get on that on-ramp to a, a highway of pain. And I'm very appreciative of you know, wealth at work, uh, kind of picking up on that and in supporting our effort to raise money for rocks. And um, I think we're targeted now that we'll probably raise about $75,000 this year. And for them, what that means, because it costs about $100 uh, to put a young lady through their program uh, over a 20 week period of time. So the unfortunate uh, uh, aspect of my daughter's story, though, is going to turn around and be a positive because well, she'll impact 750 other young girls and, and maybe help them from not going down the same road now uh, that unfortunately led to the outcome that we're as a family learning to deal with and, and heal from in, in that regard. So, uh, but as I mentioned, I've probably had 50 people reach out and thank me for uh, not you know worried about stigmas or being judged and being willing to talk about it and then tell me their story. And some of these stories, Ross, are just horrific. I mean, ours was terrible enough as it was, but uh, the things I have heard from other people is just, there's a lot of people suffering in silence out there. And I've got a a bit of a platform and I intend to use it and speak out and try and help as many people uh, as we can. And I think it all relates back to wealth at work because I think people are the 
the biggest asset of any company. And when you talk about financial resources, human resources. So uh, it goes beyond just giving people a good job and good benefits and maybe education, sometimes uh, support for pain they're going through in their life becomes very, very helpful as well. So I'm going to use whatever small platform I have to talk about it and where it helps, it helps. And in the meantime, we've got just a first class quality organization that's uh, in execution mode for the last 10 years and just helping thousands of young girls just uh, be better equipped to deal with the pressures of life. Well, I appreciate you sharing that and uh, appreciate the way you're approaching it. I, I, I can't imagine what it's like, obviously, but uh, to be able to get up each day and press forward and, and use your platform to make a difference, uh, it's no small task, I'm sure, but uh, you're grinding it out. You're doing it. We're glad to support you. So thanks for what you're doing there. Now let's pivot into the actual conference. So you have an interesting session that you're going to do, and you have three different phrases in there and say they all go together, which just begged me to ask. I have to know. I, I know what the SECURE Act is and I know what the great resignation is. But then you brought in non-qualified deferred comp and said they are all connected in some way. So would love for you to share a little bit about how that works. Yeah. So let's let's go back to the first part from an ordering standpoint is, you know, everybody talked about the great resignation and I've long said, I, I looked at it more as the great liberation. And what I mean by that is you're the very exceptionally talented people in this country, all of a sudden were not restricted to jobs in their local area. I mean, they could basically work remotely in many cases for anybody anywhere in the country. So now all of a sudden an employer is trying to maintain their mission critical employees that uh, help them build profitability and enterprise value. And all of a sudden now they might be competing with a much bigger company with deeper pockets anywhere in the country. So now you get into, if you're really um, driven by being in the people business rather than the product business, whatever their product may happen to be, you know, I'm a big believer that you succeed with having the best people you can find around you. So now you get into, okay, we've got our traditional 401ks, and but sometimes that gets very vanilla and very commoditized in this regulatory environment uh, that we happen to be in. So now here comes Secure Act 2.0, not 1.0, but let's go to 2.0. And now saying that if you are a highly compensated employee, your ability to do your catch-up uh, deferral on a pre-tax basis is going to be taken away from you. And now it's probably being taken away from you in your peak earning years, which probably means you're at your highest individual income tax bracket. And someone may say, well, that's fine. I like the attributes of a Roth uh, type provision. On the other hand, they may not. And again, they've lost choice and they've lost that opportunity. So now when you talk about non-qualified plan designs, if you will, an employer and where the emerging opportunities come in is really in the small to mid-size employers. Large companies, let's just say the Fortune 1500. 92 to 95 percent of those companies have a non-qualified plan of some kind and sometimes multiple non-qualified plans to really allow their highly compensated folks to be able to plan not only um, their taxes and their future net worth and retirement, uh, but also just kind of map it out over their career. Now we come down in the, the great liberation, great resignation, uh, I would venture to say impacted small to medium-sized employers more than large employers. I think if you went back to COVID and that kind of thing, big companies did better than small companies up from there. And in big companies, if they lose people, it's kind of next person up because they got a deep bench and they just shuffle people around. In a small company or a mid-sized company, if you lose a mission-critical employee, that hurts, and, and it hurts. It costs a lot to replace them, and then you it sets you back for a while. So, where non-qualified plans come into play is a couple or several fold, if you will. Number one, you can have a, a non-qualified deferred compensation plan that says you can defer on a pre-tax basis, what really a clean whiteboard, however much you want to, uh, by plan design. So we're seeing a lot of interest from employers 
say, well, maybe we'll install a non-qualified plan. And then those of our uh, highly compensated employees that are fine with Roth deferrals of their catch-up provision, so be it, they can do that. Those that want say, no, I want it to be pre-tax. I'm at the maximum tax bracket I'm going to be in. I'm going to retire in five to seven years or something. And I'll take this money out when I'm in a lower tax bracket, or perhaps I'm going to retire Ross to a no income tax state. So I, if I live in a California, a New York or New Jersey, I might very well want to defer dollars today at not only the highest federal, but the state bracket I'm in and pull those dollars out. And if I construct it properly later after I retire, and maybe I don't, uh, or won't be subject to state income tax. So there's a lot of very strong tax management that goes along with building net worth, building retirement security. And then those that are in the 401k, maybe they're fine with the Roth on the catch up, but they're making a lot of money and they still would like to defer more. Well, they, they were done at that point. They couldn't do anymore. Now with a non-qual, they can't. So I think the small to medium-sized employer uh, or the large company can now look to the non-qual, but the big companies, they already have that non-qual. So those, their employees already have the option. You want to do your deferral on a Roth, you want to do your deferral on a pre-tax, one's the non-qual plan, uh, one is the qualified plan. Then rolling it back into, as I mentioned, that uh, mission critical and people matter and those kind of things. Now the flip side, maybe it's not the employee or the executive that's deferring their own money. You have an employer that really wants to uh, kind of a golden handcuff type concept, but they're trying to fight turnover and, and enhance their re retention. There are ways to use a non-qualified plan. And we always hear in the technical sense, about the top hat group, a select group of management, highly compensated employees. But if you do it properly, and depending on what your plan design is, you can come well below that if it's employer funded. And we had a company we were working with and their turnover problem was kind of middle management. It was not select management and highly compensated employees. It was more the middle management area. So they wanted to get those employees um, uh, to think more like owners, if you will, and feel like they had skin in the game because younger people want to believe they matter and they got you know skin in the game from the uh, how well the company does. So we were able to design a plan with a much shorter time frame of saying, look, you're going to get a cash bonus and a deferred bonus. Your deferred bonus will pay out to you in three years, assuming you're here. If you leave, you don't get it. So you want to make it never a good day to quit because you forfeited some money to walk away. But then they tied the rate of return to the share appreciation of the company. So now in a middle management standpoint, they've got skin in the game, a deferred bonus that if they leave, they walk away from. And then number two, though, their rate of return is going to be the same as the owner uh, of the company's rate of return on his big investment in owning the company. So it accomplished multiple things, but we were able to bring it down to middle management and not just be, okay, the rich get richer and the highly compensated get more, but what about the rest of it from, from there? So I think uh, Ross and when the concept that I'm wealth at work, again, coming back to uh, mission critical uh, people and human resources being your most valuable asset how do you use non-qualified plans to bring that downstream a little bit and enhance, again, profitability, enterprise value, and then this year with the Secure Act 2.0 and the catch-up uh, changes, give people options and give them choice so that they can you know, plan for what their own future looks like from, from there. Sure, it's going to be an interesting session. There's so many different applications, especially as you go down market for the small and mid companies. It, it seems pretty straightforward, at least it always has on my end, that when you go up market, it's a pretty good opportunity. And knowing that over 90% of the companies have some type of option up there, it's certainly reasonable. But from a recruiting standpoint, I'm sure that's a big deal. And as a small business owner, I, I, when you said mission critical, I thought, I think everybody's mission critical here. So I don't, I don't know who could walk out. And uh, a lot of companies are in that position. So to be able to offer something else uh, certainly seems like a great competitive advantage. I, I look forward to the session. Thanks for being a part of Wealth at Work. Thanks for coming once again to speak and look forward to seeing you in October. 
Thanks, Ross. I appreciate the time and I help, let me talk about things I love in business and things I've learned in life. And uh, hopefully we'll d deliver a couple of good section, sessions that people will find great value in. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you, Ross. Thank you for listening to Wealth at Work. The information covered and posted represents the views of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views and opinions of Advisor 2X. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investment advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.